Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Inside Government. I'm Cedric Peterson. Today, our subject matter is, is a topic that I honestly was thrown into at the last minute, but uh, quite interesting nonetheless, um, as it relates into the world of economy, uh, microfinancing. Um, and my guests in the studio for our program is the head of the Department of Economy, Transportation, and Telecommunication, Ms. Lucy Gibbs. And, of course, I have representing the company, the owner of uh, uh, Credits, Mr. Elwin Hrunevelt. Thank you so much for joining us and being a part of the program. Lucy, let me start with you first and foremost. Um, the, the topic of microfinancing, the government of St. Martin is looking into this particular aspect of, 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 of economy. What is microfinancing? Yes. Well, first, thank you, uh, Mr. Peterson, for having us and to our viewers. Um, as you indicated, I'm the, the department head for, within the Ministry of TIAT, and we're responsible for economic promotion. I'll give you a bit of a historical background. Uh, in 2014, the ministry approved an SME policy, which is small, medium enterprise. And the whole idea is to promote SME development. Mm -hmm. We recognize on St. Martin that 80% of all businesses, that's the actual number of businesses, on St. Martin can be classified as small businesses, small and micro businesses. And in our research and discussion with them, there was always two points that was always came up. Access to available to knowledge and information. For example, how do I write a business plan? How do I do a, a market research? How do I plan? That was always a question. And a lot of the times, even though we have companies and organizations that might provide that, they can't afford it. And then the second issue is access to affordable financing. We have great commercial banks here, but their business model is different. So a person who needs a $5,000 um, loan, a $10,000 loan who's just starting out and who don't have any collateral, which is anything to secure the loan, won't necessarily um, qualify at our commercial banks. So they need access to microfinancing, and that's what it is. So the ministry set out to try to solve those two issues. We have already embarked on several free training programs. We started in the latter half of 2016, and we did this in collaboration with EU-funded program COSME, which is part of the 10th EDF, and they provide us with all the trainers, and we facilitate making sure that it, it, it gets done, the promotion, marketing, etc. And in 2017, we're also doing all through the year, started at the end of this month, the end of January 2017, we will be doing workshops. And all of these workshops are free to any to all small businesses, anybody who wants, who think they are a potential small business or anybody who's already, so they're free. And then the, the next challenge was how do we get them that access to financing? And that's where credits came in. Um, we did some research and we found a, a really great um, program that initially started in the Netherlands back in 2009. And it's a facility that provides specifically geared at helping the needs of small and micro businesses because their needs are very, very special, special, not special, but different. Mm -hmm. And that's what the micro, it, it provides access to financing. Okay. Perfect segue right into uh, uh, the CEO of credits, um, Mr. Kronevelt. Uh, thanks so much for being a part of the program and, and welcome to St. Martin. Um, tell us a little bit about your company. Okay. Uh, Credit started in 2009. And um, why? Because I worked for more than 15 years with commercial banks. And what I saw there was there's a huge market gap between the needs of um, starting entrepreneurs and the services of commercial banks. And why? Because it's very expensive to do all the huge work uh, to provide a loan to a small entrepreneur. And it's not profitable enough for a bank in order to do so. Um, and the other point is that a bank will just provide for a loan, but not any mentoring or coaching or all kind of attention what a starting entrepreneur needs. Um, so in those days, in 2006, I thought there should be another way in order to, um, to uh, give starting entrepreneurs access to to a loan, to money, and to mentoring. 
And microfinance is a worldwide solution. Yeah? It started years ago in, uh, in Asia. And I was inspired about this program, and I started it uh, with help of the government in 2009 uh, in Holland. And um, what we did is we just uh, provided uh, a loan, a micro loan, up to 35,000 euros in Holland. And we combined this with all kind of help with online tools, e-learnings, and a mentoring program. So we have about 600 volunteers who helps us, our customers, in, um, to be successful. And uh, these are, most of them are existing entrepreneurs, very successful entrepreneurs helping others. And that's the way how it works in, in Holland. So right now we have more than 9,000 customers with a loan for in a, a total 200 million euros. And we are scaling up um, a little bit, also in credit limit to 250,000 euros. So that's, that's, that's the story of Holland. But my big dream was um, to use all our, all our experiences in Holland in the other parts of the kingdom. And so we started about 14 months ago in Bonaire with the help of the government, again, uh, just to uh, start up a little branch uh, using the back office expertise from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And we provided more than 25 loans uh, in Bonaire the last uh, uh, 40 months. And afterwards, um, uh, we introduced this product, microfinance, in Aruba. We will start there at the 1st of April. And um, uh, St. Martin is the next, the next island. So I'm absolutely um, excited about how we expand our expertise and our products and, uh, in, order to, uh, in, in the Kingdom of the Netherlands mm -hmm. in order to help a lot of people start up their business. Mm -hmm. Uh, not only with a loan, but also with help, uh, with e-learnings. How, how, how do you write your business plan? So credit is also for the people who are waking up in the morning and say, okay, I want to start up my own construction company, but how do I write a business plan? I don't know. I, I, I need tools. I need templates. I need help, mentoring programs. <laughs> so we combine these trainings uh, from the government with all our tools in order to help people start of the business. This is a great initiative, um, especially those who would probably be fearful in starting a business. And, yeah. and as you said, basically doing it um, from the place of learning how to write uh, a business plan, getting that idea out of your head yeah. and on paper and, yeah. and credits helps with this. Correct. What I found very interesting is the connection and the support from government, uh, starting in the Netherlands and yeah. now Bonaire and now you're looking at St. Martin. How does that combination work? Um, there's subsidy of some kind that is offered? How, how does that work? Well, yes, there is a well, government's role. We're here to facilitate as much as possible. So we want to make the part as easy as possible for, for small businesses. Mm -hmm. I said small businesses are the foundation of our economy. It's 80% of the number of businesses on the island. Um, so government is involved. We have made a, government has made a commitment to the program via a one-time subsidy and possibly a, a yearly subsidy also. But this gives us access, all of our local business, to a pool of, as he mentioned, about 250 million euro, have an access there. And what's the great thing about credits that I like, it's a non-profit. So it's not about making profit. So their philosophy is quite different than a commercial bank. It's really about empowering and strengthening businesses because we have to recognize mm -hmm. that it's almost like it takes a village and we are as strong as our weakest link. So if we have a strong uh, business community, then we have a strong economic base and it also provides jobs. It provides jobs and it also increases um, government revenues. Um, Mr. Grunefeld gave me a perfect example of a business that was, was a recipient of one of the, the microcredits loans in Bonaire, and, ha and they have already opened a branch on St. Martin. So what does it do? It already created employment in Bonaire, it created employment on St. Martin. It also created rev another revenue stream for someone else because they rented a facility that was otherwise empty, which also turns into tax revenues for our government. Of course, that's not the primary objective, 
but that's a spin-off of it. Yeah, you because know, when, when doing the, the research on, on the microfinancing, one of the key things that you get right off the bat when you just simply Google search the term mm-hmm. um, is the vision of what it helps solves, which is yeah. um, alleviation of poverty, living, yes. lifting people out of poverty. So, and this is the focus of the United Nations at this time just about with, with regard to their, their sustainable yes. development goals. Mm-hmm. So this plays a major role in, in that area. Um, let's back up and take a, a look through your eyes, Lucy, in regard to the current state of our economy, um, thus needing microfinancing and helping in that scenario. Um, where are we right now? Well, definitely, uh, microfinancing does play uh, a role in strengthening our economy. St. Martin, over the years, you know, we have been hit the same way much of the Caribbean has been affected by the financial crisis back in 2008. We have done um, fairly well thus far into coming out of that um, situation. And I think this is just another step in propelling us forward, definitely. Mr. Cronenveld, how can one get involved um, and... um they might hear this program mm-hmm. and quickly want to respond. Mm-hmm. Uh, what can someone on St. Martin do now to take advantage of um, what credits has to offer? Um, we need some time in order to set up the whole um, operational work here on uh, St. Martin. I think it will take about six months before we can start. Uh, we need to do some regulation and uh, uh, we housing. have good housing. We need some people here from from the fields on St. Martin. But I think we will start actually in the first of September uh, this year. So it will take some months. Um, but um, on the other hand, um, you can also go to the website of Aruba and download our templates there and prepare yourself for starting up your own business. So you don't have to wait until we um, until we are operational here on St. Martin. We have a lot of websites in the region. We have templates in different languages. So you, you can prepare yourself. Um, and we will start in uh, the, the 1st of September, and then we go ahead, and you can apply for a loan via the website. What's the website address? The website address is credits.com, and you will automatically go to the website from uh, for St. Martin. So that's um, credits.com. Yeah. Okay. Subsidy-wise, what are we looking at in regard to... Uh, government's assistance to such a program? Well, based on the business plan of credits, and this is in all the ju- different jurisdictions, there's a, a one-time subsidy of about $200,000 um, that government uh, will be investing in the program. And it, it illustrates go- government's um, commitment and also government's confidence in the success and the uh, um, sustainability of this particular um, program. Economic Development Plan um, going forward, especially now government being in place, we're looking at a uh, full four-year term. Uh, how does the Economic Development Plan fit into the overall government vision between now to 2020? Well, the Ministry of TIAT is in the process of finalizing its yes, um, Economic Development Plan, which will serve as our economic roadmap for what the ministry would like to accomplish. And this particular document will also be forwarded towards our national development plan, which will be used for the next 20 years. So that's the the working document that we have right now. And much of, for example, the SME policy and a lot of the different um, things that the ministry has been doing is actually based on um, pillars already mentioned in that particular document. So even though it ha- it's not been approved as yet, we're still working on it because we did a lot of con- stakeholder consultation with the entire business community about the contents of the document. So based on that document, we're still keeping the momentum and moving forward. The economic, well, microfinancing yes. fitting into that economic yes, it, development it, it, plan, it, of course. It, yes, it definitely did because part of it is diversification. And as we hear that word all the time, but how do we diversify? And part of it is also, again, about empowering businesses. Um, without businesses, without viable businesses, we can't diversify the economy. So it's about empowering. And one of the things we look to, which branches need the most help uh, for government to facilitate, and that's the small businesses. And where do they need help? They need help with um, gaining the, the knowledge and the ability to prepare themselves and also the access to the financing. So, for example, a person who says that they might want to open a little printery shop, 
but they only need about five thousand uh, dollars. They couldn't necessarily go to a commercial bank, but they could come to us, and we would assist them uh, in getting the, the financing through the credits program, okay. All right. and also the training that they require. And the training that comes along with that. The as training well. that comes along with that. Let's look at the training process. Um, how long would that take? Um, is that something that is um, equivalent of a college semester? How long? Would it take for one to engage in such a training program? Well, it depends. If you, uh, I can let Mr. Grunewald talk about the ones that are available through the, through the e-learning and credits. But for us, we are doing our workshops. They are usually for at least five days. Um, so, for example, at the end of this month, we have a workshop that's going to be focused on um, in salaries and um, employment. So that starts at the 31st of January. We know it's tax season because what we try to do is make sure all the training is also relevant to what's happening in our community. So, for example, we know it's tax season. So we're doing tax filing, um, business filing, everything that you would need to prepare yourself to be a proper corporate citizen. Um, to play your part. So Carnival is also coming up. And of course, a lot of persons like to apply for the 21-day license, but that if you are going to be selling food, you require a food handler's license. So in April, we will be given the free food handler's course, which they would otherwise have to pay for um, via the um, EU funding. Mm. We're going to facilitate that and give that course. And that's how you facilitate as government and help them because we want to try to make it as easy as possible for them to fulfill those goals. Everything being readily available for people to gain access to um, right now and, 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 and government in regard to your department and, and issuing such licenses, is, is people responding the way you're expecting? Yes, I mean, last year we had quite a bit of turnout for the courses that we gave, um, quite a bit of turnout. And already for our cor our program that's going to be at the end of this month, we mm -hmm. have already have about 50. Because we have a mailing list of about 60 persons who have already participated and, um, and through word of mouth already. So we have about 50. It has gotten to the point where we had actually scheduled um, the workshop it's from the 31st of January to the 4th of February. Mm -hmm. We actually are going looking now into splitting it into two sessions for the same topic because we had such a, a turnout. So even though we said we're going to give at least one course um, a month for the next 11 months, we might actually end up giving double that because of the response that we have received. So it shows that there is definitely a need in the community for this sort of information. And, and as I said before, it's completely free of charge. So everybody should, as much as possible, participate. They can easily contact our department. Um, they can email us at our, we have an email address for inquiries, actually evt.inquiries at um, stmartingov.org, or they can give us a call at our office, which is 549-0220. Okay. Now, when we're looking within our economy, um, areas of opportunity that exist as seen through the Economic Affairs Department um, that microfinancing most likely can probably help with. Uh, is there specific business models that we're looking at um, or do we just leave it as wide open as one just deciding, okay, I, I like this so I should get into this particular business. But is it really geared towards like what we do for education? Mm -hmm. We point them in the right direction. This is what the economy needs because the economy is overloaded in one sector mm. um, that's proving to be non, uh, it's, it's there's non no growth there, it's non profitable. Right. Um, how do we look at our opportunities right now within our economy? Well, two things. We definitely want persons to be innovative, um, not because you know one person have chairs and umbrellas or jet skis doesn't necessarily mean we need another 50 of them. That's not the case. And when you do your development plan, or sorry, when you do your business plan or your marketing plan, which we require you to do, you will recognize where the demand is. So it's not just because you say, okay, there's 100 other people doing chairs and umbrellas and they look like they're making a profit, that I will do the same thing and get funding. It doesn't mean that you're going to be um, profit profitable because at some point the, the market is going to become saturated. So if you do a proper marketing plan, a, a, a proper research, you will definitely see the areas of where you could be profitable. It's not that we're necessarily going to point you into one direction because we don't want, we want persons to be innovative. Mm -hmm. You want to come up with great ideas. People qualifying for um, 
microfinancing loan. Um, is that is that a challenge trying to identify such individuals? Because I'm sure someone would hear this program mm -hmm. and 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 decide, wow, here's an opportunity for me to uh, to get in and, and and get some financing, but they're not focused. They're they're have you encountered any issues uh, with regard to qualifying the right individuals? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what we do, um, we have a very strict screening before we provide in, in microfinance. And that is very much um, the case because a lot of people think they are an entrepreneur or want to start their own business, but, but they aren't. So we have, to, um, we have to protect themselves against themselves. Because um, if they will start with a loan and go bankrupt, then they have much more troubles than they when they started. Mm -hmm. So what we what we do is we have a very uh, strict screening process. We have loan officers who know the market situation. Uh, we have um, uh, much experience with business plans, and the the interview is always on the premises of the of the entrepreneur of, of, of the customer. So we look around, we focus on the private situation. And we, we, it's a quite a tough interview uh, about the business plan, the motivation, and what's, um, um, what, what, what are the budgeted for the, for the next years. So it's, um, to be honest, I think um, we approve not more than 35% of, of our appli applications. Uh, uh, on Bonaire, for example, in Holland it's lower, it's 25%. But I think on the islands it can be higher if we uh, do all the trainings, like Lucy said, um, and the e-learning courses and the mentoring programs. We can point all those applicants into a certain direction. So um, it's not the case if you have a good plan, you get a loan automatically. There's a, um, f a really intense screening. So um, um, uh, and we, we are very much aware that, that there's not always a market situation for every, for every applicant. Mm -hmm. What we developed in the Netherlands is uh, we have to learn students on, when they are at school, half of AVO, um, think about um, entrepreneurship mm -hmm. because these students are the entrepreneurs of the future. So what we developed is a school program, how to become your own boss. And we learn the students n not only about the business plan, but also about um, what, what is needed if you, if you want to be an entrepreneur, a good entrepreneur? Who's your role model? Um, um, how do you decide if you uh, work for a boss or be your own boss? So this, uh, we want to implement this student program on St. Maarten uh, in cooperation with the Ministry of um, uh, Education and the different schools here. I think that will be very important for the economic in the future. So we have to make people, uh, um, young people, aware what what kind of chances they have for entrepreneurship. That is a, per a question that I actually had um, to ask you because I did think about the cross ministerial aspect, and and I did include uh, the Ministry of Education to see exactly how they would connect with uh, economic affairs in this yes. situation in order to expand these programs. So that's that's very good. Um, at what level are we looking at um, starting as? El Elementary, or is it just high school and up? I think high school high and school. up. High school yeah. and up. Yes, high yeah. school. Okay, all right. And we'll see how that works out um, eventually. I know in some of the in other islands, they do do similar programs, starting from elementary, because, you know, um, it's important for a child from a young age to be able to understand these things. And you want to give them options. Not everybody is maybe um, best suited to be an employee, <laughs> but sometimes it's very difficult to be an employer. And you need to be able to, to give them that foundation. So first, because the program now is set up for the high school, mm -hmm. but we'll see how that works. And if it's successful, then we can have a discussion with the Ministry of Education. How do we start at an even earlier stage? The earlier, the better. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. I'll just like to say again, please contact our um, department for any information that you may need we'll be happy to provide that and the contact information again yes so our phone number is 721-549-0220 or they can email us at evt inquiry dot inquiries at st .org. or they can look us up on facebook we have a facebook page so facebook slash um, ett which is the english um, acronym Thank you so much, Lucy. Thank and of you. course, Ms. Kronerveld, thank you so much for uh, joining us and being a part of the program. 
Thank you very much.